Right, so I have now reached the point with the risk v on the T35 module where I do believe that somebody could now take it and put it into the actual um, parent card and put that in the S100 bus and have the system monitor that I've written for it running. And so I thought it was about time I did a bit of a presentation about this. I've updated all of the documentation in the Git repository for this, but it is TLDR. It's quite a long read and um, it's possibly just more helpful if somebody goes through it. I'm quite pleased with where I've got to, so I thought that I would just start with the monitor itself. So I've got, um, of course you can't see it, but I've got the T35 module next to me running. Um, it's not actually in a board at the moment, it's just got the FTDI plugged into, into a terminal connected to Minicom on my laptop. And so the monitor's running. And so if I get the info, that's great. The um, CPU speed isn't updating correctly. And that's interesting. That's a piece of assembly that I wrote in RISC-V assembly that's folded into the C um, as, as an inline. So that, um, I've got a combination of C code and assembly involved, but anyway, Anyway, so um, segments, if I, again you can't see it, but if I hit segments, the um, segment display on the T35 modules going around. If I do a malloc test, so that's put some um, data into the stack and got it out again and freed it. So it's properly stack manage, it's properly heap and stack managing. Um, if I do a dump, that's dumping memory, and there's an expandable block size there, so you can see more memory. Oh, I'm sorry, I just pushed L. I wanted to push I for block size. There you go. Now if I do another mem map, grows in size. So you can see there's currently nothing, nothing in the heap, but a little bit of kind of storage. And um, this just views the whole memory um, stack and heap. Doesn't really care which one it is. And you see it started right at the top of the memory page. Um, I'm not actually, I can't actually remember where in the memory page it's put the ROM, but regardless, you know, I'll math test. There you go. So it just did um, some basic floating point manipulation there to get itself a floating point value and then printed that out. And then it did a square root on a value. Got that. So all the power, all the different math functions and things work in there. And the floating point unit. What that tells you is if I go J, see the um, floating point support is available in the new lib, but that would be useful if the useless if the floating point didn't also work in the hardware. So that's great. Um, I think I pretty much. Oh, um, the first two, the mem test. The mem test just hoses anywhere in memory. So if you do a mem test and then you do a malloc, you can probably expect the malloc to um, 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 fall over. So if I do a mem test, if I go R. Ah, that's scattergun into memory, and if I now dump the memory map, you can see it filled up the memory. So this is currently running at 25 megahertz. It could run faster, but I don't want to fiddle with the time settings in Infinity yet while it's working. But I thought what I would do at this point after that. So so yeah, um, I know I said this already, but I do think somebody could now take this, take this and put it into their physical S S100 machine and they would be able to communicate across their terminal car, across the UR with this and have this monitor running. So um, I think the next thing to do after that would be to um, go through the process of doing the affinity build. So what you can do is you can just grab the project you can just clone the project straight off the Git repository and open it up and you'll see that there is a single file already built, which is this um, VHDL here. And this is the core that I've called Hoffman after a um, particularly horrendous little German car from the early 1950s with three wheels. <laughs> just great. Anyway, sorry to digress. So if I, what I want to do is to show you, if I scroll down here, at a certain point, this is the ROM that's been physically loaded in. 
to that. So a good part of the orchestration that I've been doing is the C code and the build path to build that ROM and the path to build this VHDL. But first off, so if we just go through the affinity, you can load up the affinity and you can build the project. So I'll start doing that. And then once this is grundling along, what I'm going to do is just pause it so that you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so I think that's finished. All right, so that has synthesized that VHDL and it's worth, I still don't want to um, delve too much into the depths at the moment, but it's worth noting that um, every time you make a change to your ROM at the moment, you have to rebuild your VHDL and then rebuild your project here. So I'm currently seeing if there's a way that this can simply import the ROM every single time instead of it being physically contained within the VHDL like that. Because that would mean that you would never need to rebuild this VHDL at all. But I'll go through how that gets rebuilt anyway. But first off, so um, I won't take you all the way through programming it because I assume that you know how to do that already. Go into the programmer. Oh look, I will go through it and take a second. You've now got your hex file that's been built. Select your JTAG and uh, let it run. Excuse me if I'm banging the mouse around on the table here a bit. I've got um, cables and things all over the place that I'm steering the mouse around. I don't currently have the uh, T35 module in a um, parent card in the S100 machine yet. It's just sitting on the desk, hooked up to the UART and the JTAG. All right, so that's flashed the um, monitor to the JTAG. And if I now um, reboot that and go back into the terminal where we were before, over here, should be able to, re oh, got to restart it once you flashed it. I'm just pulling the cable out to do that because the reset button on the T35 module is really hard to find. And there it is. Now we go back into the info. There you go. Um, this um, scalar value that's here is the value for the simulation. So any time components or anything that are in the simulator as opposed to on the real hardware get scaled and that value changes. And it'll also tell you when you've done a build for the simulator. This, um, in case this wasn't clear, this is in essence the ROM. In the same way that there's the ROM for the Z80 stuff, this is the ROM here. And that ROM is contained, is the C code here. So this is all LibC based. Um, obviously this is all targeted towards being built on a Linux machine. I've not tried to build it under Windows. I guess you could, but I don't really know why <laughs> you would cause yourself that pain. But anyway, um, but so this piece of C code is doing the monitor, it's doing GPIO, it's doing floating point, it's doing you know scanf and printf type functions. It's doing all those different things. And so, um, that pretty much covers the, um, I'll bring up the, um, the diagram. So what we just did, what we just did was we did the affinity build. So we took the um, existing monitor that's already in the project by default, which is this compiled hex file, and the uh, existing VHDL core we synthesize them through the affinity and out into the um, physical hardware. And so what we can now also do is we can take this tool chain and we can also synthesize out to the simulator. And the good reason for doing that is that firstly it lets you get up close and personal 
um, with the core and what the core is doing through the inspector. But it also, and I, the, there's this really interesting possibility here to be able to um, write now hardware drivers that are testable for various things. So for instance, for the memory card that is in the S100 machine, I um, can now write an SD RAM interface that, that simulates the SD RAM, integrate that into the simulator, and then test that against code and test that against my physical hardware that's in the S100. So there's an opportunity there. I sort of, like, I don't, again, I don't want to dig into some of the possibilities of this too much, but there may be the ability here for me to pull drivers out of Udo Monk's work and get access to the um, S100 stuff that way. Because, of course, what I'm going to do next, now that I've reached this point where this is all going, is I'm now going to physically put my T35 module into the S100 machine and start adding all of the extras to um, that. So I'll be able to access the hard drive, I'll be able to access the memory, um, all of that stuff. Anyway, so what I was going to do now is I was going to go through the process that gets you this um, VHDL that we just synthesized through the um, Ethernet. Trying not to wander off on a tangent here because the there is a tremendous amount that can be done. So anyway, that core that is in the affinity, where that, the, so you can see there's two parts to this. There's the VHDL, which is the actual core. The core is named Hoffman. And there's the monitor code that gets ingested through the RISC-V32 um, tool chain. Right, so, um, and this is the, um, again, that is the synthesized VHD there, the same as we saw over in the Infinity there. And then this is the scaler that built it through something called VREX. And so this is an abstraction, an orchestration, if you like, that will build you a piece of um, HDL. And so, for instance, you can do things like, I wanted to add a floating point unit to this RISC-V processor so I came down here and I added a plugin called FPU plugin I wanted to add the segment display that's on the T35 board so I came down here and I dropped that there and if I scroll down the bottom um, you see there's where it hooks up there to the display um, this down here is where it brings in the ROM and so there are two there are two um, variants of this to build one for the simulator and one for affinity because they've both got different timing requirements but you can also see how this sort of handles defines and pragma and things in a quite clean way like like you can by doing this you can try and stay out of the um, hardware definition language as much as possible uh, it's always a bit of a, a um, devil's bargain when you talk about this kind of abstraction because of course what you tend to make is an impossible to read black box if this procedural stuff spits out a big mess out, out the end but the good news here is it's actually fairly readable I spent a bit of time going through this now and the core that it's generated for me is actually quite nice and I originally had a core before this for the RISC V um, called Bonfire but it was just kind of a scrabble of code dumped in a directory that people were copying around the place. There was no architecture around it, which I have now. And so, for instance, if I came down here and I looked for that display option for the segment, I can come in here and I can go display. And there it is, right? So you can sort of see the pairing how the um, port function here out of the scaler that's over here that, that ultimately pulls plugins and things together and builds that VHDL. You can see how how that I.O. stuff physically translated from one to the other. Anyway, I'm sorry to digress again. So if I now drop to the command line, and this is all this is all documented 
in the in the um, Git repository as well. I just thought that a walkthrough might be a good idea. So what you first want to do to get to that VHDL that we were just looking at, just got all of these on my history. So first thing I want to do is you want to make just the plain monitor, not the simulated monitor, and you want to make it clean. So clean that directory. And then this will build you the ROM. Alright, I think if I just go make monitor, that will just build me the ROM. Nope, oh, what was it? Oh no, right, I think it's make monitor infinity. Excuse me. <sighs> there you go, I know. Yeah, make monitor infinity. Alright, so that's building for the actual T35 target. Okay, and that just built that C code that we were looking at. But now you've got to build the VHDL to ingest it. And it would be nice if I could split that up so that you didn't have to rebuild the um, VHDL every time. So I want to build the VHDL for the infinity. So I'm going to do that. So this is now gobbling up this piece of scalar that's here and making me the um, piece of VHDL. And once that's done, if we, excuse me, smacking the mouse on the table. It, it, once that's done, if we go and we look over in the affinity, it'll tell us that it's changed, it's updated it. There you go. And so we're now ready to go off down the affinity path again and do our build. So you're now in a position where you can sit and you can fiddle with your C code and be abstracted away from the metal and from the um, either you can either target the Verilog or VHDL out of the um, um, risk the build process that's there. But you're now abstracted away from that and you can just sit here and work on your C code to get whatever it is that you want done. And also have access to um, already existing C code, things like drivers and so on. So for instance, if I want to hook up some GPIO and I want to bring an IDE driver in here to talk to the um, IDE card that's currently in my S100 machine. Anyway, that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. So uh, um, now that so that covered the affinity side of this. Try and see if I can speed this up and a bit and bring this to a close. So now let's just do the same thing, but do it for the simulator. So what I want to do now is I want to again um, clean the monitor directory. And then I want to build the, the, the simulator version of the monitor. And then I want to build not the Affinity VHDL, which incidentally, it gets put into this directory here under the root of the repository called local source. But now what I want to do is I want to build the, VH, the VHDL that gets built for the simulator. And that gets put here under the GHDL, which is the um, um, build structure that sits around the simulator under the VHDL directory that's there. So what I want to do now is I want to make the VHDL for the simulator. And it will ingest that simulated ROM that we just built. So that was for Affinity. What we want is the um, Hoffman core, the VHDL for the simulator. So let's do that. I'm just in the wrong directory, sorry. I want to be in the root where we were before I wanted off. Okay, there we go. Alright, there you go. Okay, so that's now ingested the ROM and um, built the code that's built the VHDL that's appropriate for the simulator. And now I should be able to fire the simulator up. And to do that, I just want to go make run. Sim. And so what I've tried to do here is to make all of this abstraction build basically accessible through a single make so that it doesn't get too confusing or messy. And you can go through this loop to test your code, build, test your code, build. And the thing the, the thing about the simulator is that it, um, I want to say it synthesizes much faster than the real hardware does. So you can make a change in your C code and be fiddling with it without four or five minute waits in between every single change while Affinity, you know, 
have synthesizers and copies into the FPGA. So I'm like, oh, did I call the right? Did I call the right thing? What did I call it? Should be run sim. I've got it the wrong way around, or I've tried to give it a make mon no, make monitor sim, make monitor clean, make monitor infinity, make monitor, make sim run. I got it the wrong way around. There we go. All right, and this will fire the simulator up. And then if all has gone to plan, what is in the simulator should be the same as what is on the um, FPGA. So now expand this up, all right? We start this up. Now the simulator runs at an order of magnitude slower than the FPGA does. And uh, the um, core is currently running at 25 megahertz and I have not yet tried to make it go faster because I don't want to muck around with the clock stuff that's in the um, Infinity interface. So you can see this is done. But this is this is this is enough for me to have core errors in the um, catches, interrupts, and other problems to figure out memory issues and to be able to really peer into what my um, VHDL is doing. So if I come over here while this is running, I can bring this um, inspector up. And for instance, if I look in here and I come down, you should be able to see it. Um, wibble wobbling things firing up the UART somewhere down here yeah if I come over here and we look at um, various bits and pieces going on that's the UART stuff uh, somewhere in here uh, if I just bring all these closed yeah, and you can see it's brought the monitor up there. So we're now coming. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say too about this is that there is now um, JTAG debugging attached to that. I haven't tried to do this yet, but there is now JTAG debugging attached to that core. I haven't put it on pins, but apparently I can hook OCD up to that and I can step and do some sort of proper debugging physically on the on, on the T35 module while it's running with something I think called OCD I haven't gone there yet but apparently that's something I can do so if I come in here something I wanted to show so if I look in the core of the FPU it's also got the floating point enabled so that's cool so if we now come over here and we uh, let's hit the, let, let's, let's, let's get the segments to go this is quite slow But if, oh, if I now actually, I think of it, oh, it's wibbling, it's doing something in me. It's doing something somewhere. Core's going. If I go and I look up, oh, there it goes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You can see it changing the segments around there. There it goes. And so it's doing the same thing now here as it's doing on the, um, on the module. If I look over here, for instance, at display value or somewhere, I thought I could see it changing around here somewhere, but maybe I've missed it. And I could do something like um, same as before. Check the memory. What was that? That was L. Or I do a malloc test on it. So eventually it'll come around. So something to that I could do to make the simulator go faster, of course, is to make the um, processor itself go faster. I'd um, bump that clock speed up from 25 megahertz to um, as, as fast as it will go. Here it goes. So now it's doing a, a, a memory allocation test. So this is just the same as what it was doing in the um, T35 
terminal before if we've got that right oh yeah and so the other nice thing is that you can of course put um, like reports and other diagnostic stuff in your VHDL you can break out of it and you can print to console you can really dig into what the VHDL is doing but of course this may not be that may not be necessary if one can directly debug off the JTAG physically on the T35 hardware so there's that as well and what I was going to say was that I then went over and looked at the terminal did the same thing over here Boop. memory test and you see how much faster it is than the simulator and um, I think that's it I think I've spoken enough about where I'm up to what I'll be doing next is getting the T35 module physically into my S100 machine and getting it to work with the hardware that's in there get it to work with the memory card because to go further to do things uh, to, th to do things like bring up a free RTOS for example I think I've got enough space in there to squeeze in a Lisp interpreter but possibly not much else it really needs the access to the memory that's physically on the S100 bus it needs access to disk and so what I should now do is having got this far is I should demonstrate it actually working with some real physical hardware plugged into the bus and with that over and out.